let's rack up here and try something else for fun. Image build trick in Camtasia. And this is just kind of a fun little thing that uh, we're going to create inside of Camtasia. All right, so let's take a look at this fun little asset that we're going to create. And this is kind of what it looks like. So let's get some real estate here and let's preview this guy. Right? Not the kind of normal thing that you would see in Camtasia, is it? But it's kind of a fun little effect. Sweet! And let's go ahead and see if we can build this thing from scratch. And I'll show you how stupidly simple it is to do, really. Let's get some room here. And let's get started. Uh, let's see. So I have some media here. Here I have a picture. And this picture is 1920 by 1080 the same dimensions as my project here. I'm going to just go ahead and drop this on the timeline. And I'm also going to take it from the default duration of 5. Oh, let's kick it out to about 10 or 11. I'll zoom in a little bit just so things are a little easier to see here. Okay, So here's our lovely gal. And put my playhead at the beginning. Snap it in. Let's click on this. Let's control C to copy. Let's control V to paste. Let's do it again. And let's do it one more time. Right? So now I have these copies of the same image on top of each other. Right? So let's click on the top image. And with it selected, let's get a little more room here. I'm going to press and hold my Alt key which takes me into crop mode. Now you could also click the crop button and go into crop mode, but then you have to deselect it. <laughs> it's a much better tip to when you want to crop an image, you press and hold the Alt key and my side lines here turn to blue and I have the blue crop handles. So let's just crop this top image in to some kind of shape and you'll kind of see how we build this up as we sort of go along. In fact I'm going to crop her in tight here right up to her head. <laughs> I get the top of her hand there. So when I let go well you can't really tell because all I did was crop the image and the image underneath is the same image, so, you know, you, there's nothing really to see here, folks. But let's click on the top one again, and let's right-click on it on the canvas here. Let's go to Add Visual Effect, and let's add us a border. Okay, and for the border thickness properties, I'm going to change this to about, I don't know, six pixels right so now I have a a small version of our image okay right here with the border around it and let's also right click on it with it selected and add us a drop shadow right and let's see what are our drop shadow settings here uh, I think I'll take the offset up a little bit just to make it a little more dramatic there Okay, so that's kind of what we got going on so far. Let's jump down to our second from the top image. I'm going to hold the Alt key and I'm going to do another crop. This time, let's crop it down this way. Oh, let's grab it like this. Drag it in and maybe do something like that. Okay. Let's click on the top image and I'm going to right click and copy effects. Right? And if I apply those to the second image that I cropped by right clicking and paste effects, okay, now I have two kind of cutout versions of this and let's do this one more time on the third layer. Hold the Alt key and oh, 
again, I'm just kind of winging it here. Maybe create something like that. Click the copy above. Copy effects. Let's paste that border and that drop shadow in. Right? So now that's kind of what we got. And here's where probably some of the coolness ensues. Let's highlight these top three copies. Right? And remember, I still have a, a background on the bottom. But I'm going to highlight those three. Let's go to the behaviors. And let's add us a drifting behavior. With all three selected, I just have to drag and drop this once. Right? And to kind of pull the effect off, now let's just preview this. Uh, all of three of these are going to kind of drift in at once. All right, well, what I want is let's just stagger these a little bit. Let's stagger them a bit so that the behavior kicks in at slightly different times. And now let's preview that guy. Boom, and there you go. A really kind of cool and interesting way to present maybe even a little slideshow, and I'll talk more about that in just a second because it gets even cooler. Uh, let's see. So the behavior that we added, the drifting, also has a animation for during. And normally I get rid of these. I set these to none. But let's just kind of think about that, or, or let's just see what it looks like. Uh, in this particular case, maybe let's let it roll and see what happens. Right? Kind of interesting. So this is a case where well, maybe I'll go ahead and, and leave the during animation. Uh, and then, of course, on the out, we can adjust the endings of these. Uh, let's see what we need to do. I'm going to make the background stick around a little bit longer. And when we staggered these, I think what we might want to do is reverse the order that they go out. So uh, by default, these, let's see what they have on um, behaviors. The out is drifting to the top. And of course, you can change all of these, you know, and try different directions and stuff like that, or even different effects. So maybe instead of drifting, I want these to shrink. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to shrink them. And let's preview it and see how we might have to adjust it. All right, that actually works pretty well. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's try this. Now that we've kind of built all of these various rectangles, crop images, what happens if we just kind of take the background away? So I'm just going to slide this down and take it out of the picture for a minute. And let's see the effect of that preview. And I'm going to take that during behavior off for now. None. So basically what I'm going to do is kind of build an abstract picture, kind of a scattered picture, right? So either way, you know, it's an interesting visual effect, but this has a little bit of drama to it, right? I like the way that works. And then let's see, let's play with one other thing real quick, if we can. Let's put our background image in again. And let's highlight these guys. And I'm just going to boost them up a, a track. I'm going to make a hole here. Let's go to my media library. And here, I just have an image. I'll show you what that looks like. It's just kind of a, a picture <laughs> with some transparency added to it. So let's click on, let's put it right here. 
and let's give this a roll. So now what I've done is I've started with an image, a picture, right? Yeah, but it's got some effects on it in the sense that I have this filter on top, right? So the effect is when these objects start to come in, they're going to be what? They're going to have a really nice contrast to the underlying background that I kind of jury-rigged there. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Okay, nice. I like it. Let's drama it up just a little bit more. Let's click on our, oh, our filter object here. Let's right-click and let's add a visual effect. Let's colorize it. Okay, and maybe lime green isn't the one I want, but well, let's change it to like red. All right, so all I did was add like a tint, a little colorized tint to my rain blur object here. And now if I go ahead and roll that, I get even a little more contrast, right? Okay, so what do you guys think of that? Is that kind of fun? Really easy to do. You know, it only takes like a minute. And here's the other thing that we'll do. So I like it. What if I want to do it again? <laughs> I'm going to highlight everything. All this little asset that I just created. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to add it to library. I'll call it image build 3. Pick a library and put it in there. Right? So now... What if I want to create like a little slideshow of different pictures using the same effect? Okay, so here's kind of a thing to be aware of. You might be thinking or tempted to think that what you can do is just copy this, right? Copy, highlight and copy, move down the timeline and paste. And you could do that, but what would you have to do? Well, you'd have to change each and every one of these picture elements that we cropped. That's just way too much work. So the reason I added it to the library is, let's go ahead and check this out. Now, I want to add another scene to my little slideshow. I'm just going to grab it out of the library, and I'm going to drop it behind my first one. Right? And we'll see what happens. Okay, everything just works, but I want to change the image. So let's expand the group. Let's click on one of the images. I'll use the background here, the original background. Let's right click and let's say update media. Let's go pick another picture. The thing to remember here that it is that it's very important if you're going to update the media in this particular example that you want to have an image that is of the same dimensions right my example here and in the library asset that I built it is 1920 by 1080 so I need to have an image that is of the same size so let's pick this and basically what's going to happen is it's going to swap out all of my cropped images and we're gonna get this handsome guy right so that's my next scene and also if I want I can now easily let's go in and oh, I'm missing the top part of the ear here so let's click on this one uh, let's press and hold the alt key and let's just fix our crop a little bit and let's crop this one up. Alt. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And of course you can, you know, change any of the other croppings that you want. And then just like that, I have a brand new scene in my little slideshow. Maybe I want to change the color of my blur here or take it off and then just for giggles let's just kind of run that and see what it looks like so here's our little slideshow of course I'd change timings and all that good stuff but yeah 
And maybe we want to put like a transition in here. I haven't tried that. Let's just make sure that works. Uh, let's do a fade through black. Okay, so that's going to fade one in through the other. And you can always try out different transitions if you want. I don't know how well a whip spin would work, but let's drag it. And to change the transition out, you don't have to delete it. You just drag a new one on top. And let's see what it looks like. And I think for this example, I'll just not have it fly out, you know, not have it break up going out. I'm just really winging it and playing around here, which is part of the fun of a little project like this, right? Boom. I like it. We're on fire. It's rocking good stuff, says Robert. All right. I don't know. While we're in the mood here, let's try a couple of other things. I don't want to get too carried away. Let's see. What if we, like, increase the border here? Let's jack this up a bit. Uh, border thickness. To something that maybe looks like a, a photograph, right? And 20. Right, so now it's kind of like a an image that builds itself out of individual pictures. Let's see what that looks like. Sweet. I love it. Robert says, these don't have to be stills. They could be video clips, right? Absolutely. I like your thinking, boss. Right. All it is is using the crop function. And, um, yeah, this could easily be a video clip that we just duplicated, just like we did the picture, right? Just copy. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Crop, crop, crop. Nudge, nudge, nudge. After you add your behavior. And you'd be all set. That might be interesting. Might like that. Okay. Uh, any other questions on that? That's some fun stuff. That's how you start out the year, I'll betcha. You know? All right. Well, hopefully that was kind of fun. All right, everybody. Take it easy, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for coming.